This is a lecture from Open Tuition. To benefit from the lecture, you should download the free lecture notes from OpenTuition.com. To show you what I mean, have a look at example four, Olga. Olga sells three products, A, B and C. The following table shows the budget and actual results for these products. So you've got there your budget sales for each of them. Uh, the standard price per unit for each of them. And the standard cost per unit. Uh, the second table, uh, the actual sales, the actual price and cost per unit. And we want the variances. Uh, what I'll do, let's do it first as though it's paper F2. And then I'll explain why. Uh, we'll do a bit of analysis. But a paper F2, we have the sales price variance. And the sales volume variance. Well, for sales uh, price variance, we take the actual sales at actual selling price and we compare with actual sales at standard selling price. Well, same here. It just happens to be three, makes no difference. A, B, C, the actual sales. 180, 150, 170. The actual selling price 22, 22, 26. And so the actual revenue 3960, 3300. 4420 and so in total I think 11680 that's not uh, the actual revenue how much should we uh, what should the revenue have been for the actual sales well again we actually sold 180 150 170 uh, the selling prices should have been 20, 25, and 30. And so the revenue, what should we have got? Uh, 3,600. Why can't I do that one in my head? 150 at 25, 3,750, and 170 at 30, 5,100. Uh, so, um, a standard selling price, we should have had a revenue of 12,450. And so the sales price variance is simply the difference between the two, which is 770. Uh, our actual revenue is a little bit less than the standard selling price, so it's adverse. So that, no difference from normal, just takes slightly longer. Uh, as always, set it out any way you want. And of course, you could have written the uh, variance down for each one separately. Uh, for A, 3960 is against 3600, so that's 360 favourable. Uh, for B, 3300 is against 3750, that's 450 adverse. For C, 4420, when it should have been 5100. So what's that? 680, I think, adverse. So there, I hope, no problem at all. It's normal rule. It's just with three products, it takes a bit longer. What about the other one, though? The other sales variance is the sales volume variance. And how do we normally do it? For sales volume, we're just looking at the effect of selling more or less. If, and if there's one product, we compare the actual sales with the budget sales. And in both cases, we cost out at standard profit.
Now, I say standard profit per unit. Uh, you should be happy with the fact that um, from the paper F2 lectures, uh, that it depends really if we're using absorption costing, we cost these at standard profit per unit. If we're using marginal costing, we cost at standard contribution per unit. Now, it can be clear in the exam, it's not sort of left up to you to decide, it can be clear in the exam which one. Um, so it's the same approach, it's just a question whether we use contribution or profit. And if that's causing you any confusion, then again, you must go back and look at the paper F2 um, sales variances. Well, let's do it here. All right, not one profit, two or three. But the actual sales, just units for the moment, of actual sales are 180, 150, 170. Whereas the budget sales, 200, 100, 100. Uh, this question doesn't say whether it's marginal absorption costing, but we've no choice here, obviously. The cost per unit, uh, we don't know whether that's simply variable marginal costs or whether that's total cost, where it includes fixed. Um, so, not a problem, but the standard profit per unit, appreciate, comes from the budget figures. The standard, the A, the standard selling price is 20, the standard cost is 17. Uh, similarly for B, the standard selling price 25, the standard cost 21, so the standard profit 4. And for C, standard selling price 30, standard cost 24, so the standard uh, profit 6. So how much profit would that give us? 180 times 3, 540. 150 times 4, 600. 170 times 6 is 1,020. So the total, 2,160. And compare with budget sales at standard. I don't even have the workings down again. I mean, A, the standard profit is $3 per unit, B is $4 per unit, C is $6 per unit. So um, we were expecting a profit of $1,600. So in fact, we've done massively better here. Uh, the sales volume variance is 560 favourable. So, uh, so far, nothing new at all. It just takes slightly longer, obviously, costing out three products instead of one. But otherwise, exactly as always. Uh, and before I go any further, uh, the question also told us the actual costs per unit. Do appreciate, that's just to try and trick you. The actual cost per unit are of no relevance whatsoever. Um, if they're different from that standard, they're dealt with in the cost variances. Nothing to do with the sales price or sales volume. However, just look at that sales volume variance. Why is it happening? There are actually two different reasons for that occurring. One is that in total, we'd budgeted on selling 400 units. In total, how many units did we sell? In total, we sold 180, 150, 170. We sold 500. And obviously, I hope, if you sell more units, you're bound to make more profit. 500 is against 400. 100 extra units, more profit. But there's something else, though. We did sell 500 units, but if you look at the original budget, 
we were expecting half our sales to be of A, and then 100 each for the other two. That was how they, they thought the sales would mix. All right, we sold 500, but if half the sales, if they still save half the sales, half of 500 would be 250. And we were expecting 125B and 125C. And what's happened? Overall, we've sold a lot more, but A is now a smaller proportion of the total. B and C, in fact, are a higher proportion of the total. And that's going to affect us, you know, because if we, um, A's, we're only making $3 profit, C's are making $6 profit. And so if it mixes differently and you sell fewer A's and more C's, that will give you more profit as well. So we're going to break that down. How much of it, uh, that increase of 560, how much of it is simply because we sold more units? And how much of it is because we mixed them in a different way? So let's analyse that. We analyse it into sales mix and sales quantity. First of all, let's do sales mix. And I'll do it in columns, the same sort of way as I did for... Um, a materials mix. We'll compare the actual mix for the actual total sales with the standard mix for the actual total. So before I put dollars in, A, B, C, where's this question gone? Here we are. Uh, we actually sold 180, 150, 170. A total of, uh, I had it before, and I better check, 13, 20, 500. So we actually sold 500 units. For the moment, I don't care whether that's more or less than we'd expected. But how should we have sold those 500 if we'd have kept to the budget mix? If you look at the budget, out of 400, 200, that proportion, half of them, should have been of A. So out of 500, half of them, 250 should have been A. Uh, 100 out of 400, or a quarter, should have been B. Out of 500, that's 125. And similarly, C. If we'd have kept the same mix as in um, the budget, we'd have sold 125. We're going to cost out, but remember, we're, we're analysing the sales volume variance. We're, uh, we, in both cases, will cost at standard profit. Uh, we've already worked out the standard profits, so I won't waste your time, but A is $3 per unit, B is 4 C is 6 which is what, uh, for A, 540, B, 600, C, 1,020 to 160. Uh, standard mix, 750, 500, 750. Am I getting these right? I hope so. Yeah. Total, 2,000. Uh, and so, even on the 500 we actually sold, 
uh, the fact that the mix <coughs> between the three products has changed has gained us 160. It's favourable. Um, and look at it, it does make sense. Because what's happened is we've ended up selling a lot more C's than we would have expected. 170 instead of 125, and C is very profitable. So that gained us 270. Uh, we've also sold a few more B's than we would have expected. Um, not so many more, and that's only $4 a unit, but that's gained us another 100. A, we've sold a lot less, 70 less, and that was the least profitable, um, so that lost us money. So less of the least profitable and more of the more profitable has given us an overall gain. We've gained 160. And a bit like Nixon New, but I won't write it down here. If you were asked to analyse it between the three products, A, 540 is against 750, B, 600 is against... I think you all know what I mean. All right, so that's part of the reason. But the other reason, of course, I mentioned earlier, is that even if we had sold them at the right mix, obviously you'd have expected more profit anyway because we sold more units. So let's now look at the quantity variance. where we will compare the actual total at standard mix with the budget total. Well, actual total at standard mix, we've already worked out A, B, C, what was it? 250, 125, 125. Uh, the budget total, which is obviously a standard mix, it should have been 200, 100, 100. Uh, we need to cost out. Well, I do I hope clearly in both cases it's a standard profit or contribution. So what is it for the last time? Um, a three dollars, B four dollars, C six dollars, now that we've done before, you know, you could just have copied it two thousand. The budget total. One thousand six hundred. So even if the mix hadn't changed at all, the fact we've sold more, we knew from the very beginning, that alone would have given us extra profit. Four hundred. And does it check? Remember, I'm analysing the volume variance here. The price variance isn't affected. Price variance we've done, finished. But here I've analysed the volume, the mix variance, we ha uh, had 160 favourable. The quantity variance, I didn't write it in, but it's not clearly favourable, is 400 favourable. So in total, the volume variance should have been 560. I'd better check back and make sure. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Phew. That's good. Enough. I said about to start all over again. But the volume variance, 560. So there we are. It's, um, I've said several times less likely, but um, I hope that's not too much of a problem.